Right, good afternoon ladies and gents. I'm joined by the reigning and defending BDO world champion, Glenn Durant. Glenn, pleasure as always. Thank you, thanks for the invite, Phil, as always. Yeah, I'd say it's been about six months since we last caught up down on the south coast. Yeah. And it's been a whirlwind year for you. Um, it's been a very interesting year. Um, I certainly made the decision at the beginning of the year, you know, when I won the title. Um, I, I didn't really want to do the BDO tour. It, it does take an awful lot out of you. You know, Barnsley and Wigan sounds very appealing instead of, you know, Denmark, Holland, Finland. You know, the, the, the whole circuit is very, very tiring. And, and you know, I'm still working full time. Um, but it's a decision I made. You know, I've made lots of new friends and I was able to sort of show my personality a little bit with the exhibition work. Um, but the concern was there that come match play, uh, that I didn't have that steely one-to-one uh, -one combat, but you know the Grand Slam was a big, big help for me. I was going to say, was that a difficult decision to enjoy being the world champion for a year instead of the, the grind of the tour? I think it was a decision I made quite quickly. I, I think I said uh, after winning it that I needed some time off. That time off didn't last long and I went to the Scottish yeah, Open, yeah. which was a... I shouldn't have done that. And I, I shouldn't have went to the uh, Scottish Open because I was nowhere near prepared and I lost very, very early. I made a conscious decision to go to the Welsh Open right in the heart of doing the exhibitions and I won that. So a big part of it was like, no, your game's still there, Glenn. You know, the exhibition's not taking too much out of you. Um, so it, it's been an interesting year, but, um, you know, it's not sustainable. I couldn't do that again this year, you know, so, you know, whatever happens at Lakeside, it's, uh, there's some serious decisions to be made. Um. Yeah, was it almost a relief to hand that beloved trophy back? Oh, that's a good question. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I dreamt of that trophy, and at the end of it, it was just beginning to be a little bit of a chore. Uh, but I promised myself I would take it from Land's End to John O'Groats, and you know, social media was, you know, it was it was a bit of a joke. I, you know, the trophy was with me all the time. Uh, that's a good question, that because yes, it was, and. Uh, there was no emotion about giving it back, you know. None of this is going to be alone, whatever. It's, it's something that will stay with me because um, it's a fabulous trophy. Um, but yeah, I was glad to give it back. Was the preparation harder coming back to defend your title than it was this time last year, yeah. coming back to try and win it for the first time? I knew I was going to win it last year. You've got to remember, I've been through heartache here. Yeah. Martin Adams, I can understand. I, I could still be thrown two years later at that double. I would never have hit that double. I just wasn't ready. The Scott Waste should have took me a long time, but if you remember from the Scott Waits one, I put my darts down and then dominated the video that yeah. year. And when I went to Lakeside last year, uh, I was already thinking, who am I going to play in the final? It was a, a great place to be, a little bit bullish, uh, and uh, you know the concern was I was overconfident last year. And uh, my preparation hasn't been ideal this year because of the exhibitions, and yeah. I haven't got the 10 titles behind me this year, etc., etc. Um, but going on that stage, <clears throat> against Gary Robson yesterday was, it was nice, it felt like home at the, at the three practice starts, you know, you get the beginning yeah. and I was like, oh no, maybe I'm not in bad shape after all and uh, you know, to beat Gary 3-0 was, oh, I'm feeling wonderful now. Obviously, this time last year you'd beat Nick Kenny yeah. and then it was Hoagie in yeah. the second round. Yes. Do you still have, not nightmares because obviously you got thrown, mm. but do those match starts that went against you still play on your mind at all? The most common question in 2017 was the Paul Hogan game. Nobody really spoke about the Danny Nofford game. I couldn't remember who I played in the semi-final until I watched a, a rerun recently. So everybody wanted to talk about that Paul Hogan game. It was just a bizarre hour of my life. Like I've just said, who am I yeah. going to play in the final? Bullish, I'm going to win this. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, am I really? Am I really out here? I mean, has he? I was looking at the scores, is it best of three, is it best of five? And I was thinking, he's got a dad here to beat me. So it was a very, very strange feeling, but afterwards, you know, when your name's on the trophy, you know, when I beat Hogan, it was like, you know, surely now I've got to go on and win it. I so I haven't spoke to, obviously, your manager, Mac. He said there was a few choice words in between that break where you nicked the set to yeah. keep yourself alive. He yeah. said there was a few choice words in the back. I, I was angry. Yeah. And I was angry and I was frustrated and, uh, the dart sometimes is 80% uh, mental and uh, I was in a good frame of mind and then just going up there I was like what the hell has happened here uh, so yeah to, to get through that was uh, yeah yeah there was a few choice words yeah but I, I, I think the 3-1 down I think the choice words were I'm going to win this yeah uh, you know sorry about what's just gone on the past half hour 40 minutes yeah I'm going to go on and win this now no that's great obviously 
you the exhibition. Did you had a favourite exhibition of the year? A uh, couple of moments. I had a night. John Gwynn, legend. Uh, he called his first nine darter out in a place in Denton. Um, I walked into this cricket club and there was like whispers. Who is he? You know, and I was like, this is going to be a long night. And yeah. uh, I think they were expecting Michael Van Gerwen when they were called <laughs> on as you know as the world champion. And I said, where's the uh, match board, John? And you know, we he pulled out this blade three, you know, <laughs> and it was like there was um, rubber from all the air stuff. And I thought this could be a long night. And uh, in the second leg, I hit the nine data, which was John's first as an MC he's ever called out. So that was a special moment. And what's funny about that is Dennis Coleman's travelled every exhibition yeah. with me, and uh, he's at Lakeside again. The only one he missed this year was that one. <laughs> that was good. I uh, done a blind 150, uh, put a piece of paper, needing 150, and hit the three balls. That was good. I, I think my favourite was uh, working with Phil Taylor on the P&O ferry. Yeah. Um, just to get to know him because it was three days, and uh, you know he's texted me yesterday. Well done. He said, you know, Mac texts me on New Year's Eve. Have you had a special message over New Year? I was like, wonder what he means. Looked and there was this number there that I didn't recognise. It was Happy New Year, Glenn, Phil, the Power, and we've exchanged about twenty messages. And you know, he's my hero. Yeah. And if I can get a, you know, he clearly, you know, I informed him yesterday. He told me to keep me updated because he's going to Australia. Um, so you know, moments like that. And I played Dennis Priestley in Manchester. And I stood behind. and was like, this is great. You know, yeah. Priestley, Taylor, Bob Anderson. I worked with this year. Gary Anderson. You know. I, I, it's been a special year when you know when I do think about it. Obviously, I think one of the low points for you was the um, Masters, mm. where you were going for a piece of the record with Bob Anderson, and we spoke briefly after that, and you said work needs to be done here because your game wasn't where you wanted it at the at the Masters. Not as disappointing as the World Darts Trophy. No, that, that was four nil up. I was the yeah. best player that week. That's me being. Big edit again, whatever you want to call that. You know, I hope that doesn't come across like that. But I was the best player that week. I was going to win it, four 0 up against Wesley and lost six five, six four. I was more disappointed with that. What I was more worried about with the World Masters, you know, Rydelski was the best player that week, and uh, I was nowhere near where I should have been. So it was a more of a not disappointment. It was a wake up call, uh, yeah. and uh, you then put the practice in from then and. Uh, you know, so I wasn't as disappointed at the Masters as much as the World Darts Trophy. Um, so when you crashed out of the um, Masters, social yeah. media went into a bit of a meltdown because it was the Grand Slam was coming up, yeah. and they were like, "Oh, maybe perhaps he's not yeah. going to compete." Yeah. So going into the Grand Slam, we didn't really know where your game was. Mm. First game on against yeah. the world number two, Peter Wright, and you've turned him over. Must have been a, a special achievement. I knew where my game was at the Grand Slam, yeah. and uh, I felt good. I felt good about beating Peter Wright. How do you feel good about beating Peter Wright? I felt like I was going to be competitive and give him a game, and uh, I was I was in a good place at the Grand Slam, and um, yeah, I really what a week, what a place, and uh, you know I felt like I played good darts. Very frustrated with the main game. I think 14, 15, 10, whatever it was in the end, flattered me a little bit. But early doors, I should have been four one up, five nil up. So I was about to say, obviously, I was there in the crowd. Very that, lonely place that, when you're losing. That day, four, yeah. And that first session yeah. that you lost, yeah. in hindsight, you should have been four one up, four one up, yeah. which wouldn't have been. A, a, a flattery at all because yeah. you played amazing that first set and we're talking millimetres yeah, yeah. from again being dominating the world number two but you must have been pleased the way you came back from the brink and then pushed him in those finals what's interesting you know when you watch when you watch the PDC and you, you see them go off after a set whatever the the the, the space the room at, at the Grand Slam is, is minute so when I came off I'm literally as close as I am to you now uh, talking with Peter and Peter's like you should have been four one up there, Glenn. When I went eight two down, you know, he said, "What's wrong with you, Glenn? Come on!" But he was talking to me and geeing me up along the way. He's, he's an absolute gentleman. Um, yeah, I was pleased the fight back. The nine data would have been really nice. Um, there was a one two four even when he won the leg, which yeah. would have brought it to fourteen eleven. Who knows? Then my darts next. So. But I went away, definitely more, you know, more positives than negatives after the Grand Slam. You touched on the nine dart. When the um, dart for double 12 no. left your fingers, did you know? No. I, knew, I, I knew it was missed. Yeah. yeah I knew it was, in fact, it was closer, Phil, than I thought. I wish I took a step back, but then I could... It's amazing what you think in that one second. Yeah. Because I was thinking, I'm not holding the dart right. One of my, 
that finger was holding the dart instead of that one. It's a bizarre thing. Yeah. But a million times I've done that before and they've floated into the double. Yeah. So my mind was, do I stand back? But when I let go, I was like, oh. I say, I've spoke to a lot of players about it and, they, and ones that have hit it and ones that haven't, they said they know as soon as it leaves oh, their yeah. fingers, yeah. You, you know whether it's there or not. I remember a mixed pairs nine dart with uh, Claire Stainsby and we, that was as sweet as a nut, that nine dart. I think I'd done a one seven seven or one and treble 20, treble 20, the double 12 the moment it left me. I've done six nine darters in, in competitive play and so I don't usually miss that final double but on that one, um, the crowd, oh. Oh man, I felt 10 foot tall for just a few moments there. But no, when, when I let go of that double 12, I knew it was nowhere. I say, and you, you got a great ovation from the PBC yeah. crowd every game you played, yeah. which must have been nice as well, because not many BDO stars yeah. get that from the PDC crowd sometimes. I think Wolverhampton is a little bit like Middlesbrough. It's a real working men's place, and uh, you know, I get more adulation, more people wanting to come and talk to me in Wolverhampton than anywhere. But there was a little moment with Peter where I was, um, j just before he came onto Sky, there was a little moment where we were messing about with the crowd, something we'd done. And yeah, they were on my side. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've always had, a lot. I've got a lot of friends, a Jamie Hughes connection, yeah. you know, and I, 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 do, I do enjoy playing at Wolverhampton. From there, obviously, you went to the finals and got beaten by Jim as we all know, because he made a massive thing about it on, yeah. on social media. Did, have, since the finders, when you obviously won it last year, has the work intensified again from there, being that you didn't win it? The throw was wrong. Really? Like, the throw was wrong. Headlines, now Glenn can't take defeat against Jim. The throw was long. Eight people, eight players before that had said there was eight. But my brain was thinking, so why is he hitting 110 average and I can't reach the board here? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not letting him have the win. Fair enough. I'm not, 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 not letting have Jim Williams have that win, so, but he is just my best friend on the circuit and if I'm going to lose to anybody, I wish he'd gone on and won it because it, I think it would have been a, a huge lift for him. I, I, I think in the next two years he can be the BDO number one. I genuinely feel like if, he, if he's got the, the right direction and, and he prepares just a little bit better than what he previously has and you know, he gets to bed early and he does the right things that you that you should do. Then uh, I think Jim can can go all the way. I played good to Voss. No one talks about this. I played okay the next match, 98 average. So I didn't take the defeat at Finders as bad as what you know. As a, yeah. I, I knew my game was there. 98 average, 100 average against Jim. I, I went away. So I did prepare a little bit different to what I normally do. Uh, I, Part of the lakeside winnings, had some work done at the house, got this beautiful dark room now. Nice. So I didn't have that competitive play coming to lakeside, and I think that was a mistake. And that's why the Robson win yesterday sort of eradicated them for the years. So that actually, I'm in good shape really. You know, I didn't play marvellous yesterday, 95, 96 average, averaging you know, over 100. So, you know, today I'm in a good place. So, Christmas and New Year, was there a lot of time on the board? Was it more family time around Christmas this year for yourself? Being that you'd already you've already won here. Balance. Yep. Balance, making sure that I get the family thing right and then then it became pure dad. So I did everything I needed to do, you know, made sure that I was spent time with Susan, went to their parents for Christmas Day, I went out with them New Year's Eve. But in between that I had a lot of dedicated time. I've put a lot of hours in my practice. I would never ever come to a major uh, championship without being fully prepared and um, Scott Mitchell said yesterday, sometimes you don't know if you've done enough. Uh, now that was my only doubt. So like I said, a lot of them fees have been evaporated with that win against Robson yesterday. Away from the board as well, it's also been a busy year. The Teesside Sports Personality of the Year, yeah. um, a great achievement. I see, yeah. like we saw how proud you were when you yeah. picked that award up. Yeah, I did. It was a, that was a great night. That was a great night. And the funny story about that is um, I, I, won, I, I won the evening as a Teesside Sports Person. A couple of athletes, I was up against three Olympians, um, a, a 400 metre runner and two female rowers, you know, and then there's this fat dar player in the middle of that. So that was a wonderful night. But then I went to the Northern Echo Awards, which is a very northeast newspaper, and I was up against a local football team um, and an 11 year old cricketer who got six wickets. So when I saw the candidates I was up against, after beating three Olympians in the other one, and it was the final award of the night, and the win and the winner is. And I went to walk up, and this 11-year-old cricketer <laughs> took the award. So, um, but yesterday I was given the BDO um, 
person of the year, player yeah. of the year, which was a, got a beautiful, you know, clock yesterday. So it's uh, it has. It's been a it's been it's been a good year. Also, as well, an invite to the BBC wow. Sports Person of the Year of the Awards, and that looked an amazing night. But one off the bucket list. I wouldn't go again. No? no, I wouldn't go again. I was disappointed I couldn't take my wife. Um, you know, she was in the hotel room, so you know, I sat with Lisa Ashton and uh, there. One off the bucket list, but mm, maybe uh, just just an awful lot of marketing people, sponsors, um, you know, just an awful lot of people like that, and uh, yeah, a lot of PR red tape. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it really wasn't me. In fact, I was back at the hotel for eleven. The after party went until four a.m. So. Um, one off the bucket list, delighted I went, wouldn't go again. No, that's great. Obviously, again, second round game, looking forward to it now? Yeah, yeah, I feel I'm, I'm in a good place today. I hope it's style fitting. Lots of respect for the guy. Um, yeah. You know, Tony O'Shea is probably the guy who got me into uh, the England team. He came to a lo one of my local pubs and he knew about me, county player, one of the better players to come out of Cleveland. and. Uh, I, I, I thank Tony for that. When I was using Daryl Fit and Dart at the time, I probably got a thousand text messages when I won the title last year. But Daryl's stood out for me. You know, I don't hang around with him. You know, we say hello, etc. Massive respect for him, and that, and that Lakeside crowd love him. So uh, I hope that uh, yeah, I hope Daryl wins, and uh, that'd be a good game. Speaking of darts, how are the new darts now? Are they home and home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've brought um, yeah, I've brought my and you know the the, the the lakeside darts of 2016 17 yeah uh, is a spare set there but you know i think after the grand slam you know i knew if i can hit 100 average with these these are ones that will drive me forward i think harrow's want me to go down in february and march just to tweak you know try me try a couple of other things longest you know different flights and that but um i'm certainly no peter wright to filter who change darts every other week but you know, every six months I like a fresh set of darts. That's that's the way I am, and I, I like them. I so say, when you're at home, you put something there. Do you tinker with like the back end no. of the dart at all? No, 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 no. no I'm very tried and tested. That works. Yeah, very traditional. Uh, I like the pear shape flights. I mean, uh, I got Phil Taylor's darts this year. He, he gave me them at the Pino Ferry, and uh, how he throws them. It's like a Christmas handicap where you get one good dart, one bad dart. <laughs> How he throws them darts, and so people who are paying 150 quid for his darts, and when they you know, when they get them, they must think there's only Phil Taylor who can throw them darts. So I, I, I threw an Alan Glazier dart for 20 years, Daryl Fitton, Tony O'Shea, and then the Harrows does a dart. So I, and they've all got that Bristol type yeah. barrel. So I haven't tinkered too much really. No, that's cool. Moving on to 2000, rest of 2018. Obviously, you touched on it. There's some decisions that have to be made. Looking forward to them, or I've made the decisions. I got rubber stamped them with Mac yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I said Mac, you know, I mean, I'm here to win this. Are you, are you, are you fine with that? You know what I mean? It was just he said win this. If I lose to Fitton in this last 16, if I lose in the quarter final, um, then I'm going to have a go at Q school. If I get the semi-finals, final, or win it, then my PDC dream is over. Um, because if I don't go this year at my age then I'll make an announcement that I'll never go to the PDC because it really is now or never. Um, but I'm here to win the Lakeside title. I'm going to let fate decide what happens for me. And uh, So that's, uh, spoke to the BDO, they know. And I think, you know, if, if, if they're saying what they're saying, they'd like me to get the semis final or win it so I can stay with the BDO with them. So that's my decision. If I lose on, you know, if I lose the last 16 of the quarters, my name will go down to the Q school. Uh, semis, final, I'll win it, then I'll be a BDO player. No, that's obviously that's great because I know it was talked about a lot after the Grand Slam, what, what's going to go and, yeah. and whatever, and I, I know we spoke away from camera and you were like, I don't know at the time, yeah. you were real up no, in the I, air. I, I know what it is and I'm going to let fate decide. I, I, I would love to go to Q school, uh, I would love to play PDC. Um, and I've never disrespected the BDO, no. I, I was a proud champion. Um, but at my age, I would love to go. But I'm not going to have this PDC talk anymore now. You know, my back is not the greatest. You know, I'm, age is catching up now. I believe I've got five good more years in me. Um, so, you know, that would have been nice. But I couldn't have any more PDC talk ever again. 
yeah. um, because it just messes with my brain too much. Yeah. So now I know, and the the BDO know, and you know, friends and family know that if I lose up to the quarters, my name's going to go down the queue school. No, that's great. Well, Glenn, it's a pleasure to sit down and talk to you as always. I could sit with you all day, mate. I'll say good luck for Rance. Obviously, we don't know who you're playing yet, but it's a pleasure as always, Glenn. And I hope your name is on that trophy. Yeah, so do I. Next Saturday. Thanks very much, Glenn. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers, gang. Thanks for joining us as always. Thanks, mate.